Yeah, g'day and welcome back. My lathe's got a number three cam lock nose. This is one of the most common sort of interfaces. This taper is very standard to a lot of different spindle interfaces. You also have the German bayonet style, which uses the same taper. And because it's so popular, it's pretty easy to get adapters and chucks and stuff for this interface. My mate Sergei's got a lovely Russian manual lathe, which uses the same sort of international taper nose. So he bought a four jaw independent chuck, but the mounting hole pattern doesn't fit his lathe. So he asked me to change it. But before I do that, I need to catch up on the missing holiday that I missed out on last summer. So let's go back to Naxos. After a week at the beach, it's back to cloudy. No, it's kind of nice weather here in Vienna as well. He bought this Centra or Centre four jaw independent chuck for his lathe. Interface is the German bayonet mount, the DIN 5527. But while his lathe has the same taper as a number four cam lock, bolt circle is different, and is the drive pin. This needs modification. I'll leave one hole. I need to move the drive pin in about a millimeter, just overlays that hole, and add the other three tapped holes. This hole will then be slightly out of alignment, but he thinks there's enough clearance for this to go through the hole in the spindle and through the bayonet plate and just work normally. And if it doesn't quite fit, he can turn down the, the outer diameter of the drive stud a little. Now, my mate Sergey knows the quality of my workmanship, so before I screw up the holes in his chuck, I'm supposed to practice on a spare back plate. I modeled this back plate in FreeCAD and did a drawing from it. This was my first drawing, but I had the drive lugs on the wrong side. So I switched them around. On this job, I can't just touch off on the center and then start drilling. I need to clock this relative to the existing holes. And the easiest way to do that is gonna to be to align against these bottom two holes. Okay, that's a bit wobbly. Just to take that wobble out, I'll put a nut on the back of each side. Oops, ring off in the shop. Nearly forgot. Let's turn it on and home the axes. Aha. So right now the machine's in a hard e-stop. And the most likely culprits are either this bridge here, which is the e-stop on the pendant, or it's X, Y, or Z axis e-stop. Two oh four to two six four. So that's the pendant external e-stop. That's fine. No, 204 to 205, that's fine, that's the x-axis, 
265 to 267. Here's my open circuit there, so that's my problem. So I've got an open switch here. This is switch 9S1. And in the schematics, you can see switch 9S1 is on the vertical, so it's on my Z axis, which is a pain, because this is the one that's got a brake on it. It's not easy to wind it back off this. What I'm gonna do, I'll just put a, what I'll do is just jump a 265 to 267, which will then allow me to release e-stop. I'll very carefully back the machine up off the e-stop, and once it's back into its normal range, shut it down again and remove the bridge. My guess is doing this in an industrial environment will get you marched off the site. Yep, that worked. So now we need to gonna go Z minus. So we'll set the jog velocity nice and slow. Continuous jogging. Just move that up. Now we can now we can shut it back down, remove that jumper, and turn that off. Isolate the machine. Just remove that jumper. So I should be off that switch now and should have continuity. I do. Right, where were we? Oh yeah, turning on and hoping the machine. I'll use a clock to set this up. Unfortunately, this 3D indicator, which I was given by Nikolai Owens, is not working. Are these easy to pull apart, lubricate, inspect, get parts for, or do they have to go back to the manufacturer for repair? Oh, well, until I get that 3D probe fixed, I'll be using this mechanical center finder. So half of that's going to be about 28.6. So with that centered in the y-axis, we can go in here and center y, oh, and zero y. We'll do the same for x. Right, the next thing I need to do is set up my tool offsets. So spot drill.
this is not so critical because it's very flexible. Close enough. Yeah, that's good. That tool is just above the part that's about to hit it. Linux CNC still thinks it's at 72 millimeters. And the reason for that is wrong tool number. This is tool number seven. That's tool number eight. So I'm gonna cancel that program and I just go in and edit that tool number. Just overwrite that and back we go. Next up, milling out the strife pin socket towards the middle. The anti-rotation bar, which the Tapmatic needs, shares this hole here, which normally mounts the ring light. Well, only a little job this week. Because of the troubleshooting of the Z-axis uh, end stop, I've kind of ran out of time now. I'll do the second one later, get this video cut, edited and uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.